All right, so this is the first vodcast for Unit 3. Uh, in this unit, we're going to look at uh, stars. We're going to specifically look at uh, what makes a star a star, All right, instead of just a big ball of gas. Uh, how long do they live? How do they die? Why do they uh, seem to burn? All right, uh, and all kinds of questions that, uh, and things that you want to study, like black holes, supernova, uh, and things like that. All right. <clears throat> but first off, we need to really look at uh, some basics and do a little quick review. For example, how do stars form? All right, we actually went over this uh, at the end of the last unit too with how planets and solar systems form. So you should know a little bit about this. For example, it, uh, as a review, it comes from nebula and nebula are those really big clouds of gas of hydrogen and helium. All right, uh, and eventually something causes those to collapse uh, but let me just show you some quick pictures. Uh, we discussed the Eagle Nebula and those pillars of creations. There's the California Nebula. There's the Red Rectangular Nebula. There's the Witch Head Nebula. <clears throat> right. But those are just big balls of gas, hydrogen and helium with some dust mixed in there. The question is, how do you get that into a star? First thing, something has to cause it to collapse. Gravity, uh, once it begins to collapse, gravity is going to cause it to get smaller and smaller. Uh, it's going to begin to spin just like a skater. And as that skater brings in their arms, they're going to spin faster and faster until eventually uh, it's a dense central ball of gas. That's where the sun's going to be. And that uh, thin disk around it where the planets are. We're not going to be interested in the planets anymore. We're just looking at uh, that big ball of gas. Now. When does that big ball of gas stop being a big ball of gas and actually turn into a star? What happens uh, in that big ball of gas? All right, it begins becomes denser and denser, and as the pressure increases, all right, because gravity is squeezing that ball of gas tighter and tighter, it's also getting hotter. All right, and as the temperature increases, all right, it begins to get hotter and hotter. Uh, right now it's known as a protostar and it'll reach a million degrees Kelvin, two million, three million. It reaches a certain point when its nuclear furnace kicks on and something called nuclear fusion starts to occur. Once this occurs, nuclear fusion uh, in the core of this big ball of gas, <clears throat> it's no longer a protostar, it's an actual star. So let's just look at our star in particular. Right, our star is, is an average sized star. Uh, there are some way bigger and way hotter, and there are some way smaller and, and cooler. But let's just compare, you know, the mass and the uh, the size and the and the density of our sun, the things uh, that we can actually start to wrap our minds around. First off, take our sun, and it's a hundred and nine times the diameter. All right, uh, <clears throat> you've started in the two labs we've done so far with scale, with the Plato model. You saw that the sun excuse me, that the Earth is four or five times uh, diameter of the, the moon. But if you were to take the sun and put it on that Plato scale, like you guys saw when we measured and calculated out the size of the sun, it would require a ball of Plato that is about five meters wide. So that's a little over 16, 17 feet. I don't have that much Plato. So that's a really big star. All right. <clears throat> and you could fit approximately one million Earths. So basically I would need a million cans of Play-Doh to make a ball that big. Right? It's way bigger than the Earth. It's got 99% of all the mass in the solar system. Only thing that comes close is uh, Jupiter. That's less than a percent. Right? If you were to go to the center of the Sun, right, uh, the density is 1.5 times 10 to the fifth kilograms per cubic meter, which does not mean a lot, but one of the most dense uh, substances we have here on Earth is lead, all right. And if you were to compare the density of the sun at the center, this isn't the outer part, just the center, that would be about 13 times denser than lead. This is a very dense central region. Uh, to give you an idea how much that would be, take two dice, all right, from the center of the sun, and they would both weigh two pounds, all right. Those are some. Uh, it's a very very dense region, all right. Uh, the rest of this vodcast is just going through the different layers. So let's start at the core. And the core is in the very center. All right. 
<clears throat> it's very small and it's very dense. It's also very, very hot. All right. Uh, again, it's 13 times denser than lead. And we're talking about how hot. Um, we know nuclear fusion requires at least 10 million degrees Kelvin. That's the magic number here. So it's definitely over 1 million Kelvin. It's more, closer probably to about 11 or 12 million degrees. All right, so it's very hot. And in fact, as it gets older, that core will actually get hotter. And it's not really a gas. Right? It started off as a big ball of gas, but it's actually a, the fourth state of matter known as a plasma. Now, plasma is kind of like a gas. All right. But uh, what happens is it's so hot that the outer shell of electrons, the valence electrons, have actually been knocked off. And you're really left with just a positive nucleus. All right. Because it's hydrogen and helium. All right. <clears throat> That's what plasma is. And again, it's where nuclear fusion, not fission, but nuclear fusion. All right. Nuclear fusion is uh, what powers our most destructive hydrogen bombs. All right, the next layer out from the core is the radiative zone. Now, here's what you need to know about the radiative zone. It is the largest region. All right. And again, all of the energy from the sun is coming from that nuclear fusion that occurs in the core. Well, that energy has to get out. And in this region of the sun, it's transferred through radiation, all right? The transfer of light, all right? One photon to the next. If you sit outside with a black t-shirt, you notice that the sunlight hits that black t-shirt, absorbs, and you get hotter, all right? That's because the sun is transferring its radiation through, or uh, its energy through radiation. Right? That's pretty much it. That's all I really want you guys to know there. We'll do some uh, uh, activities so you can visualize what's going on here. But for now, let's move on to the next layer. All right, so now we're in the convective uh, zone. All right. The convective zone is where convection occurs. All right. You should remember this from uh, when we studied plate tectonics and the layers of the Earth. Uh, convection cells, when you have those hot, less dense uh, fluids rising and the cooler, denser ones sinking. This is how heat's transferred or energy is transferred in this part of the sun. All right, things rising because they're hot and they're less dense, things sinking because they're cold and dense. <clears throat> and we can see this uh, through uh, its effect on the layer above it. All right, the layer above it is the surface of the sun, known as the photosphere. But <clears throat> these rising and sinking uh, actually show up as granulation. All right, uh, the light spots are the spots rising up. And the darker spots of the parts sinking back down. These last about 10, 20 minutes, each of these granulations. Um, and it kind of makes the sun's surface look like it's boiling. All right, next layer. All right, uh, we're going to hit the next layer of the, uh, the sun's surface and all the layers of the atmosphere here at once. <clears throat> so let's look at the photosphere. Again, the photosphere is the part that we actually see in a few days. Uh, I'll actually bring in a telescope and we'll look at that uh, surface of the sun and study if there's anything uh, there. Sometimes you can see features like sunspots or granulation uh, or things coming off the surface. But the photosphere is just basically the visible surface. It's what we see. This is where light from the sun leaves and for the most part travels through its atmosphere to us. The next layer out is known as the chromosphere. Uh, <clears throat> now, your book talks about these large spicules that come out of it. That's fine. Uh, really, what we need to keep talking about here in the chromosphere for now is that uh, what we've been seeing from the core out is that the temperature begins to drop from close to 10 million, maybe a little bit more than 10 million degrees Kelvin, and it gets less and less. All right, That's pretty much all I want to talk about right now. Uh, it's really the first layer of the atmosphere. Again, that photosphere is not part of the atmosphere. Even though it's on the slide, it's still the surface. And there's really no clear dividing line be between any of these. All right. uh, it's all you know, plasma gas state. and They just blur into one another. But um, the last layer, 
we've talked about already or you've heard about already is known as the corona. All right, the corona is the very outer part. This is where the solar winds uh, that we've uh, talked about in the last unit really start to uh, leave. It's just charged particles like electrons and, and protons leaving the sun. <clears throat> but there is something really interesting about the corona. Two facts. First, all right, this is really only visible during a total solar eclipse. Or if you have a telescope that blocks out the sun's surface. And secondly, again, in all the previous layers, the temperature drops. Uh, and think about the center of the sun is uh, a campfire, and the farther away you are from that center or that campfire, the cooler it gets. Well, in this case, all right, once you hit the corona, something weird happens. It uh, goes from about 5,000 degrees Kelvin. It jumps back up to almost a million or two million degrees Kelvin. All right, that's really all I need to cover. Um, <clears throat> your homework, watch this podcast if you hadn't, but you should have watched it in class. And make sure you have some good notes because tomorrow when I return, uh, first thing we're going to do is take a small quiz over what you just watched. Make sure you have information about how stars form, what makes it a star, information on each layer, all right, what goes on in each layer, and you should be just fine.